What is up, you guys? Welcome, Welcome to, to the Kojo, Kojo Show. I'm your host, Kobe James. And I am your more orange host, Joseph O'Brien. Let's talk music. And let's talk life. We started a podcast. Yes, we did now. We started a podcast. It's the Kojo Show. Yo, Joseph, did we make a podcast? Uh, I guess we did. Do you think anybody's going to listen? Yeah, absolutely not. Kojo. I have to confess something to you. What is that? I've been... um. I've been spreading, like, I have this thing, I don't know, I have this new humor thing where I'm, like, just doing things that make me laugh, uh-huh. and it's, like, so I've been, whenever, like, I meet people and they're, like, they kind of know you, uh-huh. and they're, like, oh, you're friends with Joseph O'Brien, I'm, like, yeah, and I'll spread a fake rumor about you, and it's, Why? it's super small, <laughs> but I'm, like, I was, uh, the other day, I was, like, yeah, do you know he, like, sleepwalks? Oh, my God. And they were, like, he does? I was, like, yeah, it's, like, a problem. Like oh, he, my word. And, like, his roommates know. It's, like, a weird... It's a whole thing. What else? Like, what other rumors? Is that the only one? I'm trying to think. Like, I, I also say, like, you like lukewarm coffee. Like, <laughs> like that's... Isn't that weird? Isn't that that's just so strange? because like, I don't even like coffee. Like, I'll be drinking a coffee at a coffee with somebody. They're like, you know, you and Joseph O'Brien are good buddies. And I'm like, yeah, did you know that he likes his coffee? Like, like room temperature? When did this start? Uh, three months ago. <laughs> like, I've been doing it for three months, and I can't, I can't help that's it. That's so funny. I mean, I think it's a lot of fun. No, I mean, that's really funny. It, it makes, makes super me, random. It makes me laugh because I, like, I know you so well, so I just think it's hilarious when people have, like, these small little, like, things that they think that you do. Yeah, I'm going to be in a right sometime, and people are going to be like, yeah, Kobe told me this, and I'm yeah. gonna be like, oh, you know what? Actually, from now on, I'm going to go with it. I'm like, did you know that, like, he owns, like, four thesauruses? Like, he's a big <laughs> thesaurus guy. Isn't that weird? Like, it's just like the first thing. I'm going to go with it. I'm yeah. telling you, if, if a writer says, hey, uh, Kobe told me this about you, I'm going to be like, yeah, I know. Super weird, right? You should. I think it'd and be then, funny. And then my whole persona in the Christian music industry <laughs> is just going to be a lie. Dude, this guy's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, he's into like really strange things. Yeah. His friend Kobe outs him a lot on that stuff. Oh, gosh. That's know. really funny. I, I would never say anything that would like make you uncomfortable. I, I, you know, in a weird way, though, I feel flattered. Like, I love I talking about I feel flattered you. that you would love to like do that for me. I like and mess- talk about. I me. think it just shows that we're good buddies. Yes, like it, it is. It's messing with you. A little I bring bit. you up all the time. I bring I'll, you up all. And the time. I say, I, I mean, I say my best friend Kobe. I say my best friend Joseph. Uh, oh, I, I say the bromance. Chills, man. <laughs> <laughs> Literal chills. Oh, <laughs> is this what it is? Is, is this, this what crazy? life is supposed to is be it like? Not crazy that you led worship at Liberty for like however long and I went there and like saw you on stage playing mm-hmm. piano little did I know I'd be making a podcast with that fool I know <laughs> like <laughs> that fool like yeah. isn't that crazy yeah wow. I mean I would have thought the same thing when I saw you on the new music uh, new music Christian Friday like, we're playlist just gonna be besties yeah what is the what are the odds of that I don't know crazy well but, man well let's hey let's uh let's let's hop in with Brandon Heath because like he's got a lot to say and he we've does. got not as much to say, but things that we would love to ask him. We listened. Um, <laughs> we no, he uh, he is such a great guy. Uh, he's been a good good person or friend to us in uh, in both of our lives and, and music careers. So excited that he got to hop on. And uh, yeah, this is Brandon Heath. Welcome to our guest segment of the show. <laughs> we have our boy Brandon Heath here. Brandon, how you doing, man? Man, I'm doing pretty good. Doing Come, pretty good. A little under the weather, right? I'm a little under the weather. I'm it's sorry. probably better that we social distance. That's right. right now, that's right. We know? we forced him to be on this. <laughs> Um. <laughs> no, no I, I don't have like honestly I, I typically have allergies this time of year yeah um but you know both of my girls have colds right now so Ugh. it could be either or it could be cold or it could be allergies oh, that's the worst man i feel like stuff's been going around everywhere recently well, I, I was experiencing something about like a week ago yeah, yeah. you know where it was just like cold down, yeah. sore throat well yesterday so. i was feeling like rough but today I feel fine. Really? Okay. Thank you to Nyquil. Thank you, Nyquil. Uh, Nyquil and Dayquil are like crazy. Yeah, like, they're they actually yeah. sponsored this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so we it's are sponsored. Crazy. They do now. If they, they were before, so I, I went on this crazy hike once with my girlfriend's family. They like did this seven mile hike up this like crazy mountain, um, and I had COVID during it. And I didn't know, um, so I was just popping Dayquils like they were candy, and and I was I made it to the top and back down. Like they were candy. Like they were candy. That's good. Pop and Dayquil, you know, pop and Dayquil, <laughs> it's a perfect song idea. Pop and Dayquil. Are we about to write this song right now? <laughs> yeah, right now. Jingle, jingle time. Well, Brandon, what have you been up to recently, man? Playing, writing. You know, I've been, I've been mostly writing uh, in this season. Um, the spring was nutso for me, uh, and then the summer slowed down, which was yeah. great. I've always, I've kind of never moved past having the summers off. Huh. Because, you know, when I was in school, 
Summer vacation. Like literally repeated the eighth grade one year because <laughs> I didn't want to go to summer school. <laughs> <laughs> what? No way. That's awesome. That's a true story. Oh, that's amazing. Let's just kick it off like that. You Let's need your, you need like your summers. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I love my summer. And honestly, I needed to do another eighth grade year. <laughs> it was a, <laughs> well, it's a bad year. That's a different story. Um, and it was, it was a great, my next eighth grade year was incredible. I actually learned how to play the guitar wow. my second grade, eighth grade year. That's great. Dang. I started school a little early, so I was already there like you way younger than everybody. Right. That makes sense. It's a longer story. Yeah, Eighth grade was the best three years of your life. <laughs> it was you know what I mean? the best three years of my life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's good I say that about so, high school I'm like high school was the best two years of my life yeah were you one of the guys that like took all the AP courses and no I was the guy that like didn't finish high school really you dropped out I dropped out mm. for music yeah well you know what if if you know don't <laughs> kids like, don't drop out of high yeah. school <laughs> I'm about to say you don't have to go to college, but you do have to go to high school. Yeah, that's right. that's actually pretty mandatory. Yeah, it really <laughs> um, is. You I don't even have like a GED, right? I do. I oh, do. Okay, you do I have did. a GED. So I, I dropped. Okay. The, I didn't graduate, but I got the GED. You got the GED. Okay. Okay. I got the GED. So that's like it's something. Res- that's respectable. That's yeah. Respectable, like I don't sure. feel like that's too embarrassing. My mom hates it when I say okay. that. Okay. I, I need to know though. What 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 was going on? That your parents justified you dropping out of school. I, um, well, first of all, I, I was on tour with Danny Goki. So, like, okay. we were out for, like, 40 dates, and uh-huh. I was in Nashville, like, all the time writing. And we were, like, in the middle of signing deal, like, and the this deal. this is your junior year? Junior year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it was, like, yeah. I, actually, it was my senior year. Okay. It, yeah. So, so, you went for three years to, to high school? I did three years of okay. high school. And then, like, senior year, I did some stuff mm-hmm. that counted as classes, mm-hmm. but, like, it was real bare bones. Okay. And we were just kind of like, yeah, like you, enough to graduate and then like not graduate, but enough to get a GED and then yeah. we're good, you know, because okay. right. I was never going to go to college. Yeah. That was never in the cards for me. Well, you it, know, it wasn't in the cards for me either, but my parents didn't care. Wow. I went to college. What'd you? Oh, no way. Where'd you yeah, go? MTSU. Oh, okay. Tennessee State. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I honestly didn't want to go. Yeah. But my parents really wanted me to go. And so. Okay. I figured. Okay. Yeah, I will go. I'll go for you guys. I hear that. Which is the wrong reason to go. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> so, did you did you finish? I did finish. Okay, and I did, did you uh, major in something in musical? Um, no, I Whoa. I thought I was going to be a recording industry major. Oh wow! So it was uh, at that point it was kind of like audio, audio production, and then also business. Okay, uh, wow. and then I I, I kind of changed my emphasis to business, but then I was like, uh, school was not my thing. Yeah. So I decided just to go. I was going to be an English major because I already had the right credits to be an English major. But then I got into the upper, like the upper English courses, and is that a lot? Oh, it was research papers. It oh, was for real? foreign languages. What? Like, okay, but like English is English. Like, why are we bringing <laughs> other languages into know, this? You know yeah, what I'm well, saying? You know. Yeah. If you really want to go into that, English is like a smattering of like Spanish and French really? and German and all this stuff. That's so, gnarly. Mm. Yeah, that's why they want you to take it. That's which, crazy. It's smart, and I'm glad that I did. But honestly, I I was getting a publishing deal, and I just didn't want to. I didn't care. Wow. So I went to my advisor and just said, "Look, this is the deal. I want to finish for my parents. Yeah. Um, but I've got a publishing deal, and I'm about to start songwriting, and that's what I've always wanted to do." So she kind of like shifted some things around for me, hmm. and I graduated with a uh, what was it? Um, university studies. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and he's yeah. using it every day. <laughs> That's right, every day. Okay. I studied university. That's amazing, man. Yeah, big university guy. Um, yeah. So okay, when did the music thing start like happening? Was that during the college thing? Like you got the mm-hmm. pub deal. Was that like when stuff started to heat up a little bit? Yeah. So I. Was I was writing, starting to be more serious about writing in college, and I, I was in a, a, actually kind of like a club. It was called Student Songwriters Association. Oh, sweet. We met once a month, and we would bring in new songs and kind of share with everybody that was in the club um, what we were working on, and yeah. we would open up the room for critique. Mm-hmm. And back then, there was no, like, there weren't really any songwriting courses that you could take okay. in school. It was really just like trial and error and, you know, like figuring out people's feedback and Mm. what to take seriously and what not to take seriously. So um, 
you know, we never wanted to be mean to each other, but yeah. we were we were pretty constructive, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, we weren't cruel, but we were definitely, like... It's good to have that. I yeah. Mean, it's really good to have that. It's good to have competition, too. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, working with this guy all the time yeah. motivates me. Yeah. yeah. It motivates me, too. He's, he's really good. We do this segment on the show where we, like, show songs, <laughs> like a show-and-tell mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. And it's like, what did you make this week or last week or whatever? And um, it kind of is... Uh, it, it 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 makes me insecure sometimes. I'm like, yeah, because he he produces and I produce, but sometimes I'm like, man, I kind of want to. Yeah, I like that. Like, it should though. It I does. Think, I think we should be challenging each other, and I think I've written with both of you guys, and I think maybe we were talking about this last time. Uh-huh. I'm not sure, like, because I've I've been I've been I've felt intimidated, mm-hmm. I've felt uh, I don't know, just um, insecure around fellow artists mm. because what they're doing is so good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but I'll feel that feeling for like maybe a day mm-hmm. and then I'll use it for fuel. It gasses me up, man. Yeah. And you know what? I've been doing that with social media lately because it's such a, like the TikTok thing, the reels thing, like yeah. where, where everybody's a musician now. Everybody's putting right. their songs out. It's like, it's such a competitive thing. And I've been kind of like using that as like, okay, they're good. I'm going to be better. Like, let's, yeah. let's do that. Be better in like the best spirit. Not like, not like I'm going to crush you. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. but like, no, I wanted like strive for excellence. Yeah, you know. Honestly, I got into Christian music. I, I didn't grow up listening to Christian music, and I was only into a couple of bands, um, Jars of Clay and Cayman's Call. That was like, mm. that was my Christian music catalog right there. Yeah. You know that I I listened to, but I listened to a lot of pop music and a lot of country music. Yeah, and I didn't know if I wanted to get into Christian music because I thought, well, it doesn't really sound like what I want to sound like. Mm. But I was I was going to church with a guy that was um, we were in a men's group together. He was a pop producer at the time, and I but he also loved Jesus. Yeah. So I thought, well, I could make music with you because I like the way that the music that you're making is sounding. And so I I ended up uh, working with him. He did my first record, um, actually my first five records. He did his name is wow. Dan, Dan Muckala is his name. Wow. Which um, Dan, uh, he's like a brother for me. That's amazing. So that's really how things got rolling for me in music. Interesting. When I graduated, I had a pub deal, but I didn't have a ton going on. Yeah. But I had a couple of friends that were um, indie artists. Um, a guy named Matt Wirtz and a guy named Dave Barnes. Mm. Oh, okay. And they were honestly like you guys. They were really good friends and they were really competitive with each other. Yeah. And it drove them to be better, you yeah. know. But they played the same crowd, and they toured together. So yeah. they, so there was kind of like this, like a little bit of a tension, but it was mostly camaraderie. Camaraderie. Yeah. And and there I was, the third wheel, <laughs> 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 who who was thinking about playing Christian music. That's so interesting. So they were both working with a guy named Ed Cash at yeah. the time, mm, and yeah. so their stuff. It kind of had a, like if you listen to their early stuff, it sounded kind of similar because they were working with with Ed. That's so interesting. Um, but also Ed looked at both of their strengths. You know, yeah. like Dave had a little more of an R and B edge, yeah. mm-hmm. and then um, Wirtz had more of a pop edge. Yep. And so, not to say that they sounded exactly the same, but they were working with the same producer who knew the same sounds, yep. same plugins, same players. Yep. Mm-hmm. And uh, and for me, I was jealous because I wanted to work with Ed, but I also thought maybe I should work with somebody different. Not sound like these guys, it's, you know what I mean? Yeah, because yeah, I wanted to have my own my own lane. I will and, say that like your original few records, especially like I was listening back recently, doing my research, and um, <laughs> they have a very distinct sound to them, especially like even thinking about Christian music. Yeah, like there is like very much so pop elements of that time, like all over the records melodically mm. sonically it's kind of got like some like hip hop style drums to it like mm. the sounds it's it's neat like it's different and i i really appreciate that what would you say are some of your like favorite songs that you did of that era of like you well i mean for me my very favorite is i'm not who i was mm. and and yeah. the thing about me is if i sit down just my default is i'm going to write a country song interesting that's kind of what i default to is writing a country song. So I'm not who I was, was written in like 30 minutes 
on guitar. 30 minutes? Yeah. It's a very country lick. Come on, man. Minutes, man. Do, 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 do. It's got this like very. It's a great lick. Country mm-hmm. feel to it. Ugh. So I bring it to Dan, who's a pop guy. And um, without me knowing, he put the. the you know, like that '90s hip hop. So yeah, good. it feels like a hip hop beat. It's so crazy. Which I love. I, yeah. I love '90s, but I, I'm not like a track guy. I've never like sat down with Ableton or other you know platforms that that you can like play with tracks and sure. stuff loops. Yeah. So I I leaned into Dan and his strengths, and so he made it into this really cool pop slash country singer songwriter song. Yeah. It doesn't even have a chorus, does it, really? No, no. Which is, like, that's radio. Like, it was on radio, no chorus. Yeah. That that blows my mind. Like, especially in this day and age, like, that's that's kind of, like, not a thing. Like, Mm. it's not possible. No, well, but the thing, it is is possible. Which is wild. Which I think you should take risks like that. Mm. And I got to be honest, I wasn't really to, I wasn't really willing to take the risk because I wrote it just for me. I wrote that song for me. I didn't write it for... I didn't have a record deal or a publishing deal at the mm-hmm. time, actually. It was just a song that I needed to write. And I feel like we, as songwriters, sh- should write from that place more. Mm-hmm. I, I, I should, even now that I'm really commercial. Yeah, I, I want to write from that place more where it's just something that needs to get out. Yeah, And then take it to somebody that you really trust. Or I always think it, it's beneficial to work with an outside producer who, yeah. who doesn't really have you know, a lot of skin in the, in the song, mm-hmm. yeah. but can make it their own as well. You mm-hmm. know, Interesting. I feel like it's a great collaboration. Made to Love was pretty pop, mm-hmm. but even Toby, I remember being on the road. I was on the road with him in 08 when, when, uh, right. Give Me Your Eyes was a big, we were actually both up for Grammys, but wow, but not able to go because we were on Winter Jam. <laughs> oh my so, word. So he was on his bus. I was on my bus watching like the telecast no way. of of the Grammys. Uh-huh. Who won? Uh Kirk Franklin. <laughs> 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 Which was crazy because Kirk hey, we laugh because Kirk is but Kirk is so legit. Yeah. Like mm. and this is how legit he is. Uh when we won or sorry, when he won, he called Ingram. He got Ingram's number and he called Ingram and he was like, Y'all uh, you and I both know you should have won that Grammy. I mean, oh my gosh, it, That's we so had cool. it was Song of the Year that year. It was it was number one for fourteen weeks. Fourteen was, weeks. Fourteen, 14 was? weeks. Unbelievable. It oh was my crazy. Gosh. It was like half the year. It was number one. <sighs> That's super nova. But, but Kirk Franklin won with a song that really it didn't really what song? do anything. I don't know. Wow. Well, that says but it that's right the there. GP, well, well, are you with me? But that's <laughs> oh the thing. yeah, we got that. Never mind. Okay. But, but let me just say this on the record: uh, he is one of the most classy, creative uh, role models wow. out there. The, number one, that he called us to say you should have won that Grammy. But number two, he continues to put out incredible songs yeah. and mentor yeah. young artists and work with. Pop artist Mariah last year had, really? had a huge Christmas song. That's right. So I mean, just his the classiness of that phone call was crazy. Mm. But let me also tell you, at the end of the phone call, he said, "You know, it's not about awards." He said, wow. "Just let God keep." He said, "Dipping his pen in your ink." Wow, is what he said. Wow, uh, on that that phone call, and then I was nominated two years later. And we were at the Grammys together, and I got to tell him how much that really wow. encouraged yeah. me. Um, so, yes, he's had so many awards, but let me just tell you that awards can be political. They can be yeah. when, when you know when your crew shows up to vote. So, are you guys members of the Recording Academy, by the way? No, I don't think I am. We guys, didn't, we didn't get invited. You well, you no, you up, are. Right? I'm inviting you right now. Oh, really? Oh. I mean, like as a works? member. Yeah, I'm inviting huh. you. We just need to get you signed Live up. on the Kojo show. We're in- we are invited. <laughs> yeah, I don't know because... Joseph, are we legit? <laughs> Whoa! The first round just closed. But honestly, you guys qualify. You need to be voting huh. in the Grammy for the Grammys. Really? Sweet. You need to be voting. You need I would to be vote. part of the Recording yeah, Academy. It. Yeah. It's an incredible organization. It's really all so about... So you get to vote for the Grammys every single year? Yeah. 
That's neat. That's really yeah, cool. Yeah, if you if you are a if you are a recording if you're putting recordings out commercially yeah. every year, like yeah. people out there listening, you might be uh, surprised to know that you qualify as a, wow. you, you could be a voting member of the recording academy. Okay, here's a question. Do you think that the Grammys is it like would you say like sometimes winning an award is because financially like maybe a label is pushing for it? Like is that a thing or is it more people based like in the organization that are voting. Well, so you're talking about block voting. Block voting, when a label is pushing to vote for things, yeah. block voting is highly discouraged. It, do, it doesn't mean that it doesn't happen, but uh, it's actually closely monitored and watched by the, the Academy. And if it's an unfair uh, advantage on voting when it comes to block voting, which is when a label says, okay, sign everybody up and let's all vote. Um, wow. mm -hmm. that it's, it's strongly discouraged. And then I, I do believe that people have actually been disqualified if they've been if they're Interesting. Oh, wow. been block, block voting. But here's the deal: I just told you, like, here's two guys in my industry who are not voting members. Yep. You need to be voting members. We should mm -hmm. be. So that's how Grammys are won. Wow. Is when uh, an, an artist says, "Hey guys, your voice matters. Wow. Uh, regardless of who you want to vote for, yeah. Um, you need to be a part of our voting membership. That's amazing." That's how people win Grammys. Well, Joseph, yeah. we are gonna vote. Yeah, yeah, I'm down. We gotta. We'll, we'll make it a whole thing. It'll be a podcast. Yo, thing. A segment. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That. Well, I'm gonna end this segment off with one more question, and then we're gonna move on. Um, let's see here. I, I like this one, uh, and it, it may be a longer one, but we'll we'll just try okay. it. Uh, when you set out to make music, what was your goal for it, and do you think you reached that goal, or has it changed completely? Um. Well, I think I did reach that goal. Um, what was that goal? To write songs that really moved people uh, awesome. and songs that remind people that they are loved by God. So that that's always been my goal. And yeah, I think I've, I've met the goal. And also that I can make a living at it. <laughs> You yeah. know, like that was, the, that was the <laughs> yeah. other goal. That's our goal. I tell Come on. People, for sure. Come on. I tell people that honestly, if you are paying the bills, yeah, uh, making music, you are a successful musician. You're doing Amen. it. Yeah. I love Amen. that. You're successful. I love that. If you're paying the bills with music, you're successful. And that feels like an attainable goal. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not one of those goals like if I get a Grammy, if I get this, if I, you know, it's no. like, no, just as long as you're able to like do this for a living. Mm -hmm. And I like that. That's good. Yeah. Okay, welcome to Game Time. This is my favorite part of the show. And today, Brandon, what we got is I have written uh, random CCM artist names in this bowl. Okay. Um, and the goal is he's going to describe these CCM artists without saying if they were in a band, like their band name, their artist name, or any of their songs. So they can't say any songs. No songs? Literally no songs. Okay. No deep cuts, right. no hits, right. nothing. You can't okay. say a song. You can only describe them as a person. Okay. Or if he wants to say their band name, he has to describe the band name like catchphrase. If you play catchphrase, I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to be awful at this. Okay. Because I'm terrible with people's names. Really? <laughs> I don't even remember. He's like Natalie. No, like they're, they're, they're all like they're, all, they're big. They're huge people. Okay. You know, like I have uh, forgotten my own players' names on stage the, before. Really? Uh, These are. I actually did that once too. I called. I, I said. I called him out. I was like, "And thank you, beautiful Brandon." He's like, "My name's Bernard." And he said it in my ears, and I went, "Bernard." Wait, did you do that at Camp Electric? Yeah, I did it at Camp Electric. Yes, that was so funny. I was uh, there. Was it Bernard Harris? No, but um, but no, no. I, I take it back. I got. I, I called him Bernard when his name was Brandon. Oh, okay. So I'm getting it wrong now. Okay. Bernard oh, okay. Harris was the bass. You? Yeah. How'd you get Bernard? That's hilarious. But Bernard was on the bass, and Brandon was on the keys. So oh. I flipped their names. Oh, that's I see. that's understandable. Yeah, it's yeah. understandable. I get that, that happens. I told him I was gonna do it though. I was like. I'm going to do this live. Like, and he's like, <laughs> you're not. And then I did Oh my it, so. God. Okay. All right. Okay. So anyway, so we all understand the rules. Obviously we're going against each other. Okay. And in a minute, we're going to have to just see how many, like we get. Okay. You know, all right. Crosby, um, start the minute. And then I guess, I guess we'll just keep a tally in our, okay. like, all right. I, in our for stuff. the record, I can kind of see through the paper. So put it, there you go. Yeah. All right. If you I don't want to cheat. Two, one, begin. Okay. Okay. This guy's like the new Chris Tomlin. He's got Brandon long Light. hair. Yep. Got it. <laughs> I might be good at this, but I'm a CCM. Okay, about it. okay. She is. <laughs> she is. Um. Um. She's a fighter. Um. She uh, is. Uh. She's a black woman. She, she won it. No. Oh. Uh. Um, Mandisa. Mandisa. Oh, dang, dang. Well, you can't. Yeah. Oh, I guess you didn't say overcomer. Over, I didn't say overcomer. That's good. That's good. Okay. Oh, she's okay. She's newer. 
She's currently on the road with Jordan Felice and Danny Goki. Tasha Layton. Nicole. Nicole. Tasha Layton. Tasha Layton. Okay, okay. Oh, okay gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Just so you guys chill out, bro. Um, okay, okay. This guy is, he's kind, he's been doing it for a while. Um, say he he had metal around his hand. Or, no, uh, no, no, no. Um, <laughs> he's kind of like. You got seven seconds. He's Come the on. OG redneck of Christian music, uh, but he kind of does like, r- r- like, uh, Zach Williams? Zach Williams. No, oh, he was uh, Crowder. Uh, oh, Crowder. Oh, sorry. Oh, dang. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're right. You should have said most majestic beard in Christian music. I didn't think about that, guy. Yeah. He's got the most he, majestic. He really does. Yeah, it's it's incredible. Trademark. All right, all right. Okay. Dang, okay. All right. You that was slayed good. me. I was I just two to would. one. It wasn't even that. It wasn't even that bad. It was good. I, yeah. All right, Brandon, so, that was so embarrassing. Brandon, okay. you're gonna read it off now to Kobe and I, and I'm gonna okay. absolutely destroy Kobe. That's the goal. <sighs> Joseph's just like really good at this, and so he well, he I'm purposely. A, I grew up this. a CCM little child. No, but you just purposely picked this game because you're great at it. No, the good thing is I forgot most of it because I wrote down all the names, but I forgot most of them. Okay. So, all right. You know. Okay. All right. Round two. Okay, here we go. So uh, he's he's brought the country sound to Christian music recently. Zach Williams. Yeah. Oh, yep. that's okay. Good. Good. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, she uh, wears like a really long ponytail. Um, uh, uh, Riley Clemens. Yep. Boom. Oh, what? Yeah. She yeah, does man. a ponytail. Uh, She's a very grande thing. So he's kind of like the hip hop like OG. Toby uh, Mac. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I'm, <laughs> this isn't good. He's up to uh, one. Don't know who that is. Um, okay, so he actually kind of studied under Toby, wrote for Toby. Michael Tate. No. No, dang. Um, he's also kind of hip-hop, but like singer-songwriter hip-hop. Uh, has red hair, was it was an Ian Ryan Stevenson. Sheeran. Yep, Ryan Stevenson. Ryan Stevenson. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Stevenson. Um, okay, this is, um, he is like, he and Amy Grant were like, they're, oh, Michael Michael Smith. Smith. Yeah, mm-hmm. I guess three. Let's give it to both. Okay. Uh, okay, one I, last just, one. I just said her name. Yeah. Just Amy Grant. Name. Yep. Dang it! Ah! <laughs> We're running out of time. Uh, she, we call her uh, Auntie. She's on. Cent- no. Yeah. Overtime. Who was it? You, you Lauren Daigle. It was Lauren, Lauren Daigle. Daigle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. No, I didn't win. You were no, you were up four three. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, at Centricity, they call her Auntie Lauren. They call her Auntie uh, Lauren. Auntie Lauren. Yeah. Well, is she like kind of like grandmaish, or I guess Auntie? No, because she's like the stuff. She's like the biggest thing on our label. Auntie. Yeah. Auntie Lauren. Let's grab, grab oh, I get it. Yeah. 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 All right. I don't either. Yeah. <laughs> Here, which which ones right. do we have left? Okay, right. I need to like some take... of there. I didn't know. <sighs> I gotta take like a position That's where awesome. um y'all can't see. What, what was the score? Uh, he four won to three. He won four to three because we oh, tied okay. on Michael W. Smith. So. All right. Okay. I think I'm clearly tied. better at we reading tied. the names okay. than saying the names. You were actually really that good. That was really good. We, I mean, you got through like seven, <laughs> so okay. that was a lot. <laughs> All right. How am I gonna do this? This is gonna be really hard. Okay. So. Uh, I'll go ahead and just pick the first okay, one. Okay, go for it. Um, and uh, yeah, we just go for it. Go for it. Three, All right, two, two, one, one okay. begin. Okay, uh, one of the OG pop punk and Christian music. There's like two bands, and this guy was the singer for one of them. Relying um, K? Y- y- uh, yes, yeah. Okay, but like oh. his who who leads that that band? What's the lead singer? I'll tell you. Oh my gosh. Okay, uh, it's Matt <laughs> Thiessen. Okay. Um. Oh, oh, OG like um. Uh, We've said rock. OG a lot. A lot of really? OGs. Okay, Rock. He's uh, uh, Dwayne uh, the Rock Johnson. No, no, it's <laughs> like uh, like screamo music almost. Oh, okay. Like metal uh, music and Skillet. Christian. Skillet. Yes, um, lead singer. Uh, oh man. Oh my gosh. We're we're killing it. At <laughs> lead singer um, names. Okay. Oh my gosh. Keep me in these bands. Um, uh, they're Australian. And For King and Country. Yes. What are their their names? Joel and Luke. Yes. Yeah. Luke Smallbone. Small yeah, yeah, that works. Yeah, yeah. I think we'll, we'll give that brand. Couldn't remember. Okay. Him. Um, oh, this is their sister. Oh, uh, Francesca Battistelli. No, 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 no. I know this. Uh, oh, oh my gosh. Uh, one of the first Saint, fe- Saint, big female uh, Christian oh, artists. Rebecca St. James. St. James. Oh, yeah. that was, now it's one to one. I did terrible. I gave you the one. saint. On Thanks that for one. that one. Yeah, it's over. Welcome. One to one. We tied. I'm sorry, I Rebecca. Like, I should have remembered your Rebecca, name. Rebecca, all love. I, it was pressure. I just can't. I can't. Apparently, um, the, who's the dad smallbone of the, <laughs> both the guys? I don't know. Of both the guys. The dad smallbone? What's his name? David? I don't know. David. Yes. <laughs> uh, apparently, he like told uh, JRA, my booking agency, to like sign me two of them. And I've never met him. They were like, yeah. Really? Yeah, David Smallbone like, like advocated for you. I was like, really? I've never met him. Uh, it was just very interesting. That's yeah. cool. He's, uh-huh. a, he's a really good dude. I've heard he's great. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh-huh. Show and tell. It is show and tell. Brandon has brought us a little something something to to show the class. Brandon, want to elaborate on your song? What what's it called? Um, I don't know what, what the name of the song is. I don't think we ever landed on it. I, I think it's called Accidental Idols. That's whoa, sick. cool name. What? I love that. Idols. 
Um, I have to just say I was writing with Paul Duncan on this one, and only Paul would drop uh, like a, a name like a that. A gem yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, so I was writing – so I wrote this with Paul Duncan and a guy named Ted T., um, amazing singer, songwriter, producer. Um, we were writing for my last record and, uh, I, I was just thinking about like the tower of Babel. Yeah. I, I think I just read about the tower of Babel. And oh, that's so cool. How we're kind of in a very similar time where we're, I don't know, we're just kind of like chasing after things that are, have become idols. You know, that's people so have become sick. idols. Um, and I don't know. I, I just have a feeling that God is not super stoked about it. <laughs> you know, I can, the, the, yeah, I agree with that. The things that we don't really understand um, or, or know how they are uh, taking um, this platform in our life. Mm. And so I thought it'd be kind of cool to write a song about that. And so um, I, I've, I had been listening to a ton of like Ace of Bass at that point. Oh, fun. So um, who's that? Um, Ace of Base? Ace of Base. Ace of Base? Nah. Oh, buddy. Oh, unbelievable. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> We're going to have to teach him. I saw the sign, and it opened up my eyes. I saw the sign. Life is demanding, perfect, right? but without yeah. understanding. Yeah, yeah I saw the sign. I saw it's the classic. Sign. Oh, oh, so it's like an older group. Yeah, yeah, it's like 90s. Oh, 90s. Oh, yeah. that's probably why. Yeah, like he doesn't... He, before his, I don't 90s, know any his 90s secu- realm is a little blank. I don't know any music that's secular in the 90s or 80s. I only know Christian no music. No Michael Jackson either. I know. I've never oh, listened to a full-length wild. Michael Jackson song. For probably. Wait, not still? even a song? Like, not still? even a song. Probably like, not. No. Still? I don't think so. I will right, we'll fix okay, that Okay, we're the stopping this interview right now, <laughs> and we're going to listen to... Or even the Beatles. I've never listened to a Beatles song before. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Well... Let's play this one. Let's play this one. I am really sad right now. Okay, so anyway, I love this song. It didn't make the record, and I am still bummed about it, but I love the song. It just turned out really cool. This is a safe space. We can can play songs that don't make it on the record. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, play it. Play it. Here we go again. Shouldn't have been, but I walk right in. All the enemies that I call friends never should have trusted. I was listening to a lot of uh, Post Malone at the time. Yeah. Oh, sure, yeah. Dude, this is yeah. sick. Just wait for the beat, dude. When you go and climb, stay away, stay away. Yes, sir. Run back to my accidental idols. Oh, <laughs> Here we go again. Oh my gosh. That is so good. <laughs> oh that is so my good. gosh. Dude, that gives me like old Brandon Heath vibes. That's really Yeah, it is kind of like That old gives school. me like old school Brandon. How did like, that not make record. the record? I don't know, but well, honestly, I had a cap. I was only able to do eight songs on this record. Wow, eight small. There like, are so many record. songs, so many more songs. Yeah. Oh that my god. That's a on this great record. one. Yeah, that Dude. was like <laughs> almost a lot of I bet wow. sync opportunities with that one too. It's cool. It's like so vibey. It's but got, I mean the oh. post Malone thing definitely hit. I was like, oh yeah. Like the melodies and the little bit of auto tune on there that's like purposeful. I, I hope love. that song blows up and then Oof. your label's like, Oh well, I guess we need to put it on something now. Cause yeah. that, that's so cool. You gotta put that on Thank social you. media or something, man. That's yeah. got like a little special sauce on it. Done. Free. Do it for happen. free. I'll do it for <laughs> Man, that was great. Well, so Thank what you. are we calling it? Uh, Accidental Idols. That's, that's a beautiful title. That was Accidental Idols, and it was amazing. And that was Brandon Heath. Hand and brief, man. Hand and brief. <laughs> yep. um, that was a good time, man. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we're still learning how to interview, of course, but um, it was a good time. You don't have to self-deprecate. I'm we, sorry. We know what we're doing. We, yeah, we, oh, We've yeah. been interviewing people for years. For one episode. Uh, what is this episode? Is this six? 
Six. I think this is six. Crosby's Crosby. on his head. Not He's saying it's six. Well, guys, we've made it six. I can't believe we've made it six weeks. Uh, we made it all the way through October. Which yep. is, thank you guys for sticking with us through the month of October. It's been a great uh, time with you guys, a great month, uh, and excited for many more episodes of Kojo. Yeah, man. We talked music. And we talked life. Catch you next week. Peace.